Hey guys, uh, well, I am here and I wanted to go through a little bit of uh, some blocking that some of our members have done. So uh, I'm just gonna sit here and hang out with you guys. Uh, and really what I wanna do is just kinda, A, introduce a little bit of where we're going, what we're about to do with um, better at beach and with our courses, uh, and with our new membership. So I really wanted to make sure that you guys all know about that. And I also wanted to go through a blocking tutorial specifically for threes and fours. So what I want to do first is open it up to any questions. You know, uh, I would like to go through the blocking tutorial, but if you guys have any questions about blocking, specifically threes and fours, I would love to hear it. What's up, Bo? Um, thanks for getting involved in the chat. I am here for the next maybe 20, 30 minutes, and I want to answer you guys' questions. So hopefully this uh, restream is doing its job, and I am streaming to multiple platforms, and I really want to... Uh, help you guys out. So if you have any blocking questions, you guys let me know. If not, I'm going to share this video, which is within our membership. It's on Better at Beach. It's within our membership, and it is specifically in our Ultimate Defender course inside of the blocking and peeling uh, segment. So if you guys want to learn a lot more about blocking and peeling as well as defense, uh, we have that in a membership and it's at betteratbeach.com right now. If you check out that home page, you'll be able to get access to it. Uh, but I wanted to go through one lesson with you guys today. So uh, if you have any questions on blocking, please just go ahead and let me know. And uh, we're going to uh, get into it. I'm also going to start live streaming here on Instagram, so hopefully everybody stays with me as we move there. All right, um, blocking and peeling Q and A. All right, so hi to everybody. Okay, so uh, Ellis, you got a question about a four, but a four is a slightly shorter player. What's the best way to dive angle? And is it change the lineup late or attempt to jump in the angle and have less of a reach? Same question, Alice. Uh, that's tough because if you're a shorter blocker and you want to do a dive block and you, you want to go for a four, there's a couple things that happen when we do a dive block. Now, it, it, for the people who don't know, a four right, is when a blocker pretends to block line and then at the very end, they dive into the cross or they move into the cross. Usually the defender behind them is going to end up running to the line. This is meant to stop two plays. It's meant to stop the hard cross swing. Okay, the hard cross swing. And it's meant to stop the high line. Is it meant to stop the hard line? Usually not. Usually not. Usually we're trying to bait somebody into thinking that a high line is open so that they can get there or we're trying to make somebody think that the hard cross is open, so we're sealing them up. Now, if you're a shorter blocker, Ellis, you had a good question. If you're a shorter blocker, how do we change that lineup? There are a couple of ways, and I did want to share this video with you guys to kind of really get into depth and explain it. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you this video, and as this video is going, because we're just talking about three and four blocks right now, but as this video is going, I want you to enter your questions into the chat. Guys, if you are on Instagram, uh, I'm also live streaming, live streaming on YouTube and on Facebook. So if you wanna join there, I'll be able to answer your questions a little bit better. So you can head to Better at Beach on YouTube or Volley Chat on Facebook. And I'll be able to answer those because Ellis, I think this video is gonna answer it for you uh, pretty quickly, okay? So I'm gonna start this going and hopefully it there helps you guys so out many different ways to block in beach volleyball and so many different play calls but which one is right for you are you using the best block calls for your body and for your team and for your athletic ability we're going to discuss all of that and some techniques that you might not know about in this video <laughs> Yeah. 
In our other videos, we've gone through our line block, our cross block, and our three block and four block. In today's video, we're going to show you the different variations of three blocks and four blocks. If you don't know what those are, those are bait and switch blocks, and it's making a hitter believe that you're going to be in one zone when you might be in another. We're going to go over all of the different styles of three and four bait and switch blocks. When I'm doing a three block, hey guys, my goal Instagram, as a blocker I just is want you guys to, to head make over the to hitter believe Facebook that I am blocking cross chat when in actuality I'm going to block to down their channel. line. So YouTube what channel, I need to do to is at the end, questions. I need to That's position be, myself uh, in their diagonal, having them believe that I've taken over Jump on Facebook, volley court. chat. At the very end, I do YouTube, need to end up blocking line because I should be coordinating with my defender who is doing the reverse of this call. There's a few different ways that we can do it. And depending on your height and jumping ability, you need to choose which one is right for you. If you're a shorter blocker, you don't want to end up reaching too far outside your body. Why? Because if you reach out to the side, you instantly get shorter. You're not as high and you can't penetrate the net as much. So you're not going to be very effective. So we have two ways for shorter blockers to be able to move into the line late. One of them is our three variation where we just have a stable position in their cross. This hitter is coming at me. I'm letting them know, hey, this is where I'm staying. I'm in your cross. I'm blocking cross. And then just after they take off, I'm going to step into their line quietly and then press straight above me. This is the way to get your highest jump. However, this little step shuffle is pretty hard to do with good timing without giving it away for the hitter. If you have somebody who really, really wants to hit hard, this can be a good move because they're probably going to take their eyes off of the ball earlier, which means that after they jump, bop, bop, now you can jump into the line and press straight with big height. The other way is called a dive block. Okay, So you're going to start in that diagonal. And then instead of the shuffle step over, what you're going to do is you're going to dive with your whole body into that zone. This can be really effective. And you don't need to be as high when you're doing this block because... You've positioned yourself to make that hitter so thirsty that they want to unload on the open space they see on the net. So this can be really effective. If you know somebody wants to hit, you show them the daylight that they can hit into, and then you seal that off by diving in there. It's important to have great hand shape and making sure that you're not just going up and out, but your hands are shaping back into the court where you want to get your block point. The last three variation is going to be our juke step. So this can also be really effective because the human eye is attracted to movement. So the hitter will pick up your movement and they'll start to think that there is an open swing. So as a hitter is coming towards me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle, but I'm actually at the end of their approach going to make a move into their diagonal on the ground showing them that I've moved into the cross and then after they jump, then I'm going to dive back into the line. All of these variations will work against a different type of hitter or just a different player. And your job as a blocker is to know which one works best for you. Should you do your shuffle step so that you can get max height? Are you doing that too early and giving it away? That doesn't mean you should stop doing a three. It means maybe you should try a different variation of the three block. Can you do your dive block and still be big? Can you do your juke block where you step over and then come back? Finally, if you're an absolute monster, you can do a hands three block. Now, this is reserved for people who have really long arms and can get really high above the net because your body is actually going to leave space down the line and you're going to jump up with the hitter. They're going to feel your body mass in the diagonal and only your hands are going to go outside of your body into the play that you promised or that you forced that hitter to hit into. 
You want them to believe that it's open. And if you do have the long arms and the height to do this, you can then take that zone with two hands and really great hand shape to lock them up and get that block point right there. You have to make sure that this is a hitter that you're playing against. And what I mean by that is that they're not going for soft shots and they're not looking for defenders because some people like to shoot, some hitters like to shoot. And if they see a defender moving, then they're going to shoot around you and you're going to be useless anyway. Okay. If you get somebody who really wants to hit hard, these three and four blocks where you're pressing into those hard angles is going to be super effective. Let's get into the four block. All of the variations of the four block are exactly the same, except. All right. So I wanted to share and just kind of get that uh, rolling. Now, there's a lot more that goes into that video, but I'm sure that just the three block, just those different moves, uh, you know, I'm. <laughs> we'll, we'll say I'm pretty sure that those are going to give you guys some questions. So if you want to ask some questions right now, let's talk about blocking a little bit. We'll talk about defense. And just so you guys know, that video is one of, I think we have 18 uh, different blocking videos in our membership, in the ultimate defender portion of our membership. So if you head to betteratbeach.com, I do these meetings live every week and you would be able to be on camera with me and ask your questions i'm only going to do this for a short amount of time but i just wanted to take the time to show you a little bit about what we do uh, on better at beach and what our online coaching is like so we have these meetings you'll be on camera with me uh, we have a meeting thursday and also here's what i'm also going to share uh, i'm going to share we have a video analysis so we just started this, okay? And I really want to invite you to our <laughs> to our easy video analysis. It's every Wednesday. I'm going to try to do it every Wednesday. I'm going to put it here in the search. Uh, if you can't find it or you don't see it for whatever reason, then uh, I'm going to give you the link. I'm going to read it out. But on Wednesday, you guys can sign up for this. It's like three bucks. Uh, and I want to show you what it's like to be coached online videos. So if you go to calendly.com, if you don't see the link there, if you go to calendly.com forward slash better at beach forward slash film session, this Wednesday I have 12 spots. 12, 12, 12 spots. Uh, for people who want to submit their own videos, I'm going to go through your video for 10 minutes. Okay. And I'm just going to introduce you to some of our programs. I'm also going to give you the two things that I see are probably limiting you the most in terms of success, skill, technique, strategy within those 10 minutes. Because you have to have your own film. You'll upload it to our private Facebook group, which you'll get as soon as you sign up for that uh, that film session with me. I got two of them on Wednesday. So 12 total spots. I think we have 11 left, but I'm inviting you to work with me. We're going to go through your film and it's just going to be about 10 minutes. I'm going to pick out the things that I see could get you the most points, the fastest. So if you ever want to, uh, join up, like I said, we got 11 more spots this Wednesday. So you can sign up using that link calendly.com forward slash better at beach forward slash film session. Now, now that I've said all that, I do want to start answering some of the questions that I see piling here into the chat. So uh, I'm glad that a Brazilian in America uh, can block on a girl's net. <laughs> well done. Uh, I'm curious about how he works on his spine trunk flexibility because he's able to get his shoulders so uneven when he presses across the net. So Francis, I mean, First of all, Anders Moll has a ton of mobility because if you can see how stable he stays when he drops down for his block jump, not everybody can do that. So he drops his ass down to his heels and then he can pop up and he's still stable when he does it. So he's balanced when he takes off. What does this require? This requires <laughs> a lot of training in the gym, a lot of that band work, side shuffle steps, uh, and a lot of balance. Also, it requires flexibility. 
So if you guys aren't working on your mobility, if you haven't uh, taken a look at our, our, I think we have a YouTube video called the best warm up ever. Um, if anybody could find it in there and then post it, that would be great. But it's called the best warm up ever. And it takes you through a lot of range of motion. If you can't lift on a certain day, if you can't do something uh, physical, you got to go through dynamic range of motion because if you're not going through range of motion, you can't access different ranges of motion that are going to get you the most power, right? So we can get more power if we're more flexible because you're going to be able to generate some speed. You're also going to be able to generate more stretch, which is more space, which is more speed, which is more power. So I really encourage you guys to do a lot of mobility work. Um, and Anders is one of those guys that can drop the butt down, then go up nice and big and still be balanced. So that takes strength in all ranges of motion. So I recommend that, okay, being able to drop down like that. Um, I have a twin. Oh. I get it. Thanks, Coach Neil. Uh, no, I don't, I don't have a twin. It's just me talking to my own video. <laughs> uh, the best timing for a shuffle step. Ellie, are you talking about the shuffle step when we want to block a three or a four? I'm going to assume you are until I see kind of the next, uh, the next post out of you. But the best timing, the best timing is kind of tough to determine because you have to know when the other person can see you. So if that other person can't sees you move into the place you don't want them to see you move, then you've gone too early. So you have to know when they look, when they see you. Most high level players probably see you when their arms are double lifting backwards. So on their step close, that's when a lot of players can look. Okay. Beyond that, eh, some players don't look at all. So you can move on them pretty early. But there is no right timing because it has to do with when the other person can see. So if you're not looking as a blocker, and we, we go over this in our Ultimate Defender course, again, as the blocking, peeling uh, section of the Ultimate Defender course. If you're looking for that, go to betteratbeach.com. You can join the membership. You get access to every course we have made. We've completely redesigned everything so that you have one choice to make. It's not, hey, do you want to fix your arm swing? Yeah, we have that. It's not, hey, do you want to attack better? We have that. It's not, do you want to be a better defender, a better blocker, or learn how to pass? Everything that we're doing is now included in one membership, and that one membership gets you live meetings with me every week. So if you want to learn how to block and how to do these things, go to betteratbeach.com, and you'll be able to sign up right there. Now, back to your question where we were talking about being able to hide from the hitter. Some hitters look late. Some hitters see things sooner. Some hitters get so far under the ball that they can't see something that's two feet in front of them like me right now, okay? And if you're on that hitter, you can move as early as you want. As soon as you know that they're not seeing you, that's when you can move, okay? So you have to study the eye work of the hitter and if you're not tracking their eyes and their location and relationship to the ball, you can't time a three or a four block well at all. So you have to pay attention to that to be effective with a three and a four. Okay. Um, <laughs> Eric, uh, what is short for a blocker? Good question. Guys, uh, I, I'm going to throw that out to you. What do you think on the men's side? What do you think the shortest a blocker can be to win a medal on the world tour. I, I want to hear your votes on this. I want to hear your opinions. So what do you think is the limit of height for somebody to be able to be like, you can be a great blocker. You can still, but are you five, six, five, eight, five, ten, six foot, six, one, Smedin's is effective. Samoylov's is effective, right? They're both 6'3 and 6'4, 6'5. They're not that huge. Uh, Trevor and Try, 6'4 and 6'5, maybe pushing 6'6. 193 Spartacus is, I think we would call it 6'4. 5'9 is aggressive. 5'9 to be a, a, a medal-winning blocker on the men's side, 
of the world tour. Uh, that's optimistic. That's optimistic. <laughs> that, that would be a, a little bit nuts. Um, cool. Who do you guys think is your favorite? I would, I'd like to hear from this too. Who do you think is your favorite undersized, like typically undersized blockers? So we can't pick somebody like Phil, like 6'9". Uh, I want to hear who your favorite blocker under 6'5". So that's under uh, 197. Who's your favorite blocker? under 197 centimeters or under six foot five. Uh, Francis, I think we'd be friends, man. Uh, I keep seeing your comments and I completely agree with you. Uh, Rossi is incredible with how he's penetrating. Uh, he's getting low, he's staying calm. He can play Adrian's game with just like beautiful flow sets. And uh, he, if you see a lot of his recent games, he's just getting over the net so effectively. Uh, I think he penetrates more than Try, because uh, Try has great hand play, but Rossi is really far over the net. Smedin is solid. Try is great. I think what Try, what makes Try great, and I got to play with him um, in Brazil four years ago uh, at the test event in Rio for the Olympics. Uh, Haydn got hurt. I was able to go in his place, and me and Try ended up playing there, and Tries moves on the ground are just amazing. So he makes great moves with his feet to make the hitter think that he's somewhere else. But then once he's up in the air, so he he might not uh, teach this, but he he does it and he does it effectively. He leaves like a three quarter or an eighty percent kind of bend or kink in his elbow, so that when he blocks, he can have excellent and aggressive hand play. So if you've ever seen some some guys get all big and they stay stiff right there, I'm I'm thinking of like uh, maybe I'm thinking of Tula from Germany, like just big long arms, right? And he can go here. But if you watch Tri's hands, how he goes in and out with his elbows and hands, that type of play once you're in the air allows you to be so versatile. So if you're a blocker, I I think you guys should start experimenting with leaving your hands available instead of completely locked out so that you can have those little bits of play. Um, we, in our blocking and peeling course, about that today, but uh, in our blocking and peeling course in our membership, uh, the all access coaching membership, again, weekly meetings like this, we go over your film, you submit film, we go over it uh, and you, you get my commentary on your game live, but we also have, uh, <laughs> Every single one of our courses, including the 60-day max vertical, which is everybody's favorite. Um, I'm restarting mine after a, a hamstring injury. Uh, most people have gotten at least three inches on their vertical within two months uh, just through the consistency of the training and the right programming. So if you want to increase your vertical, head to betterbeach.com, get that membership. If you want to learn how to block, which we're talking about today, we have... 79, 10 meetings dedicated just to blocking um, and over 20 videos. So you can check that out on the membership and then I would see you on Thursday and we would be face to face. But uh, Ellis says, I'm gonna have to say, I think Sharif is very underrated. His world tour performances recently have been incredible. I mean, that's like undoubtable, right? Uh, the Qatar, The Qatari national team, made of non Qataris, but doesn't matter. Uh, they're just balling out. And yeah, I think he's only 6'3", 6'4", but getting over the net, like, a, I mean, over the net. So sick. The guys who are penetrating well are just crushing. But I, I also want to talk about uh, the women's side, right? The women's side. And then knowing that there are blockers, but they're blocking less. So peeling becomes massively important on the women's side because maybe they don't have as much upper body strength to just rail balls from, you know, 10 feet off, 11 feet off. Uh, so it might be a little bit easier to defend a hard driven on a women's, but I, I, I want to hear your guys' opinion because – when Alex made this big jump to becoming 
near unstoppable. It was her peeling and her hand play, Alex Kleinman. It was her peeling and her hand play, being able to dig balls with her hands that made her all of a sudden this like, man, now she's got every tool in the book because now she can dig when she peels. And that gives April a little bit of chance to relax on defense when your blocker gets involved defensively. If you're a blocker and you, you're still like a ball goes over you and you're still like, hey, defender, why didn't you get that? You got to get that out of your head because the blocker has to affect the play. If you're not so big that you're making somebody go up and over you, then you can't really rely on your defender to get a high line over you. I remember my first volleyball tournament, my first ever beach volleyball tournament was with my brother, Brian. And these guys, just these little guys just kept hitting these high lines. And I felt like I had a football field to cover because Brian wasn't taking up that much space, right? He was getting like over the net, but that's it. So now to hit a high line over him, you don't have to hit that high. You just have to shoot it. So if you're only getting this far or this far over the net and you're blaming your defender for not digging a high line when they hit over you, you're not taking up enough space for them to allow to allow them to get that. So make sure that you play with peeling a lot. And yeah, I'll say it again. Like If you want to learn how to peel this this course, the one that I'm sharing, I could reshare the screen, but this is like one of the videos that we have. And if you want, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm actually going to share with you one screen here and show you everything that we have uh, in the Defender course. I'm just going to take you for an inside look here, but there's <laughs> so many videos. Um, hang on. I'm going to take you inside. So starting with blocking and peeling one. No, not there. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to screen share what we got in our course section here. Okay. So this is just a look at the back end of our, of our membership. And this is only one course, right? But this is our ultimate defender course. So I'm going to just going to take you through all of the, uh subjects and categories we have in the beginning but you can check it out right here so this is our ultimate defender course and you'll see that once you get in here we got a couple highlight videos that get you going and that's fun but the first thing we do is pre-testing so we show you exactly hey you have to film you have to film certain drills so that i can coach you online if you don't film the drills and you can't post it to the Facebook group, if you don't post it to the Facebook group, then I can't help you specifically, but the courses will still do their trick if you do the drills with them, okay? Uh, I give you some stuff that you can do at home. I also give you some of the best workouts for defenders, and that's, that's just in the first course for defenders. After that, we talk about your defense, your posture, your stance. Um, I have all of these nuggets from our old our old courses where people ask really good questions and once in there, I answered them. We had our editors clip them so that you guys can get just like little quick bites of nuggets. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should, it's at Mark Burick and our, my Instagram's about to upgrade cause we're adding, adding all of these little like advice nuggets to it. Then on meeting three, how do you play without a blocker? Base positioning and responsibilities. Uh, we go through the online meetings, uh, tips for defensive positioning, uh, stop missing the overset. This is all still inside of just the defender course, okay? If we scroll past those, uh, I guess, 16 meetings, eight, 18 meetings, then we get into our blocking and peeling section. So you can see that in our ultimate defender course, there's still, there's 157 lessons. And that's, that's just one part of our membership on better at And we give you the drills. We give you things that you should focus on every week. And then you come back, you submit your videos on the Facebook group and you can ask your questions and we go over it. If you want to win more tournaments, I'm here to help. So that's all I'm going to, uh, push for that, but I do want to get back to answering our, our little bit of blocking questions. Okay. Now, Brandy Wilkerson reminds me so much, I mean, in a weird way of Ricardo Santos. Give me, a, give me an exclamation point in the comments if you agree with that. And I'll tell you why. Okay. But Brandy Wilkerson and 
Ricardo Santos. How do, why do I think that they're alike? If you see their ability to swat shots, to wait, reach up, and then throw and affect the ball so that they read when you shoot and then they jump high enough to affect it. That's where I see those similarities. I mean, Ricardo's like just, he's incredible. His, his power when he chooses to use it, his vision, how calm he stays, he saves energy and you cannot get his partners out of system because he's such a good setter. But what makes him good from the blocking standpoint is he knows when you're about to shoot, he'll step off the net, reach high and then swat. And I've seen Brandy do that time and again. So she makes it easier on her defenders because great height and knowing when the defender is shooting and choose changing the block because of it. So um, it, I, I would really like to do like a comparison video between Brandy and Ricardo. I think they're, they're both incredible, incredible. Uh, Madison, I think is only six, four, a duck. Mm -hmm. um, Ricardo is your favorite. I'm glad man. Ricardo's nasty. And yeah, and he's tall and he's got long arms and they make him seven foot. So uh, do you guys have any other questions about blocking, defending? I can finish up this video. I don't have much more time. I just want to take another eight minutes. But uh, I want to show you one of uh, the end of the next video that's in our blocking and peeling uh, course inside of our Better at Beach membership. So unless you guys have other questions, go ahead and you know check them into the chat. But if you do not then I'm just going to sit here and uh, watch this video with you. And if you want to see the rest of this video, if you want to ask questions, go ahead and then ask them. All right. Oh, we do have questions. Uh, do I have anything to say about hand independence when blocking? Yeah, absolutely. Each hand is responsible for a different section of the court. Um, we go over that really really specifically and in detail. And we give you four drills inside of the blocking and peeling course that you can do just for individual hand placement and what each one is responsible for. Because I think most blockers think that I'm blocking line and nothing else. Instead of this hand is blocking line, this hand is reaching as far into the court as possible. So these two hands have very, very different responsibilities. And you can establish one shoulder and hold line and then get this one really far shoulder in order to take up more space so hand independence is huge for blockers and the world tour is getting better and better and better at it um every month it seems um how to work on it we have those drills inside of our course francis so we don't have time for that today but um if you want to check out a bunch of those drills and with feedback and everything go ahead betterbeach.com store if you haven't yet you can sign up for, um, if you want to check out your blocking, you can sign up for our free, basically free video analysis. It's three bucks for 10 minutes and you and six other athletes, I'm going to take you into a, a little private group on video and I'm going to look at everybody's video. So guys, if you haven't yet signed up for one of my free video analysis, I do them on Wednesdays or I'm trying to make it a regular thing. You got to sign up. Then you got to prepare a video. You have to upload it to the private Facebook group, which I send you an email where that Facebook group is. And then we meet on Wednesday and I take you through what I think um, would help you the most in terms of beach. So um, that's that. Uh, if you want that again, if it's not populating it, the address to get that, I'm going to put it on volley chat as well. So if you're on Facebook, volley chat, uh, it's calendly.com forward slash better at beach forward slash film session. And you can book, uh, a, a time slot with me to check out your video. Um, what makes a smaller player be a good blocker, a higher jump? Yeah. If you're short, you either have to jump high or you have to be amazing with hands defense. Um, if you haven't seen the Lindquist sisters from their AVP days, top 10 team for a long time and they did not have a blocker. They just played great floor defense with their hands. Um, the, and the Brazilians are actually excellent at this. If you notice the Brazilians play like defense a lot closer than a lot of other teams and they choose to take away the cut and use their hands to dig balls. So um, 
you just got to worry about the jumbo if you're five five, but you can figure it out if you get some speed on you. I heard that arm swing technique in older age is almost impossible to fix. What? No. Um, Gro Gromo Zeka, arm swing technique in older age is almost impossible to fix. Completely incorrect. All you have to do is know how to activate the right muscles and how to swing through yourself. Now, if you're not getting above the net every time because you're getting older, then you need to you need a different arm swing. But that's that's different than saying that an arm swing is impossible to fix. You need thrower training. Uh, you need mobility in your chest. You need to be able to activate your shoulders. And we have a few videos on that. And we have an entire course called fix your arm swing in 21 days, fix your arm swing in 21 days where I'm, I'm going to take you through all of the drills that you could ever need to fix your arm swing. It's just up to you to do them, film them, put them up in the Facebook group, and then let me give you your corrections along the way. So fix your arm swing in 21 days. We're going through our offensive segment coming here in the middle of June, which is passing, setting, attacking, and then fix your arm swing. So this summer, we're going through all of that in order. If you want to fix your arm swing in that little bit of time, then you can choose to skip and, and not like follow with the group, but say like, hey, I'm only signing up for this membership because I want the fix your arm swing in 21 days program. Um, and I promise you, your serve will get better. You will relieve pain in your shoulder. And I know I'm not supposed to like say that because it's supposed to be a, a medical thing, but the guys that I've been working with for the last eight, seven, eight months in Utah, who I just made a couple of tweaks to their arm swings and their activations, they're hitting harder than they ever have. And they're in their forties. Uh, and they finally stopped all of the pain that comes with it because you start doing it the right way instead of tightening and, and closing all these spaces. We open your body up. We give you the exercises to make you stronger and keep you healthier and hit harder. If you want to hit harder, fix your arm swing in 21 days is in our online uh, membership at betterofeach.com. So you might as well go for it uh, if you want to stop feeling pain in your shoulder and you want to add some juice. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, Francis. Great. I'm glad you booked it. Guys, uh, I'm going to show a little more of this video and then I'm going to head out. But we got 44 people watching. That's cool. I'm going to show a little bit more of this video. Maybe not the whole thing, but I'm going to share the screen with you. And if you have questions, please, please, please go ahead and ask. And if the, um, if the sound doesn't work, please tell me, make sure that I can, I can hear you. Uh, Brasileiro, yeah, fix your arm swing in 21 days. I take you through everything that you need to do to go forward. Of course, like after that 21 days, do you need to keep those motor patterns by doing the right drills? Yes. I can't say like, hey, I've given you all the tools and I've given you everything that we can do and I've given you every drill and every correction that I need to, and then you just go and do your own thing. After that, you have to apply as an athlete, you have to apply the fixes that we make in those 21 days. But I promise you, you'll have a new arm swing in 21 days. I, I guarantee that. Uh, the membership is $19 per week, Ed. So it's $19 a week, and that gives you the meetings with me, uh, and it gives you every one of the courses. Now, I, I'm sure you know, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but um, those courses to do them live with me uh, used to be $297 for a month or $497 for four months, and now it's just $19 a week to... Uh, subscribe to them as long as you want. And we include live coaching, which uh, everybody in our membership uh, or in our elite tribe right now, they know that like where they get the most juice is being able to post their videos and have us correct it live. That's the best thing. So if you don't have a coach that you can work with or you can't afford it, uh, we have a way better way to do it and you can submit your videos with our membership online in our private Facebook group and we'll help you out. And we got an amazing crew to be able to do that with you. So you can just head to better at beach.com. You can check it out. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message. Happy to answer them. So let's get into a little bit of this blocking. Again, this comes from, I don't think we posted this on Facebook, but this comes from our blocking and peeling section of our ultimate defender course.
going to make sure that we are positioned down this person's line. So we have the shuffle four where we are in the blocker's line and then we take that shuffle step and press straight. That's going to get you the most height possible. It's also tough to time. Then we have the stable dive block where all we do is position ourselves in the line and then we dive into their angle. We have the juke four block. We're at the very end, start in the middle of their line of approach, make them run right at you. Just as they're taking off, making sure that they see you, you shift into the line, make them believe that the diagonal is open, and then dive back. That's really effective because you're showing with movement that you've opened space for the hitter and they get really thirsty at the end. They're gonna try to hit low and steep because they see the open net and you're gonna lock them up with low, well-shaped hands. Lastly, we have the hands four block. Again, this is reserved for the big people, long gangly arms, seven feet of height, who can get their chest over the net and make effective moves outside their body. You can open up any way you want using the shuffle step, using the juke step, but you're not gonna dive back with your body. You're just gonna get that block with your hands outside your body. So these are all of the techniques and moves that a blocker can use when they're using the three or the four block strategy. You can of course do this type of move to defend shots as well. All you're gonna do is make sure that you use a delay in order to block the shot. So it can be effective knowing that a hitter will want to hit over a blocker they see in front of them. And if you want to make them go even higher and you have the height and athletic ability to do so, then you're going to shift, which will make them try to hit over you. You delay, climb the ladder, reach as high as you can and slap that ball back into their court. I bet you didn't know that there were so many different moves that we can use just to execute three, four, ones and twos blocks because it's not just about strategy and just about basics, but it's about knowing what that hitter wants to do and getting inside their mind. Once you're inside that hitter's mind and you can make them think something or make them go for a shot, you're gonna have a much better chance of stopping them and winning your matches. I wanna know in the comments what type of block you like best or you use most. Do you think that the one, the two, the three, or the four is most effective for you? And let me know if this video helped you out or if you want me to like this that have to do with blocking or defensive strategy. We can point you to some of our other videos or if you ask a unique question, we can answer that in our next video. So go ahead, use the comments. If you like this video, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. It helps us out in a big way. And you can hit the bell so that you get a notification anytime we come out with a new video. Especially if you comment and ask us to make a video, make sure you get notified when we come out with it. If you want to get involved in the conversation, head over to Facebook where we have Volley Chat, Get Better at Beach Volleyball. It's an unbelievable Facebook community where people are helping each other get better at beach volleyball. And if you want to take a free course with us, we're going to give you a link below this video so that you can sign up for our email list and take your first free course with betteratbeach.com. All right. So, uh, guys, that's all I have for today. Uh, so if you have any last questions, let's go ahead and we can ask them. But uh, if you want a free drill book, uh, we have a free drill book available for you on our website. You can check any of the blogs on our website. If you want to get started right away with the coaching program, because we're meeting on Thursday, uh, then you go ahead and sign up. Uh, right now we're running through the de defensive course and we're about to get into the full fledged offensive course, mm -hmm. which is a four month program for passing. We focus specifically on serve receive. Then we get into setting. We do a lot of hand setting. So if you're, if you've ever been nervous or your hand setting is just like a little sketchy, uh, you're worried about what a lift is, what a double is, we go through all of that and we give you drills so that you can be a hand setter in 30 days. And I, I don't have the screenshot pulled up, uh, but one of our members, she said, she posted a video of her hand setting in a tournament and she's like, I can't believe it. I'm finally a hand setter. She's hand setting in tournaments. 
and it's a good feeling to have that control. And that's in the uh, how to set in beach volleyball, the, the setting masterclass. That's also included. Everything is included in the membership. There's one way to get all the courses and one way to get your live meetings with me where I get to check out your videos and help you out. Okay. Uh, Cone SP, could you repeat how to identify the right timing to jump when the spiker is going to hit to get an effective tall block? You always want to jump after the hitter. Okay, there you always want to jump after the hitter. We go over specific timing for uh, shot blocking and for pressing. When you know somebody's going to hit hard, you're going to jump a little bit sooner and penetrate a little bit more. But we go over those specific timings and depths and how to change your hands and play with your hands in the blocking and peeling masterclass inside the membership. Uh, and if you're blocking and you need some video work or you want somebody to look at it, we have, uh, I'll scroll back to it and make sure that you have it, but you can always shoot me some film. You get one opportunity for a $3 video analysis. And that's where I show you basically what we do every week with our members. So uh, you can use that free video analysis and I can look at your blocking to see what's going on. And then uh, hopefully you join the program so that we can really get you to a new level and help you start winning some tournaments. But you're always going to jump after the blocker. I'll give you that. When they're hitting hard, you definitely want to penetrate a little bit more. You want to get over the net, make sure that they jump and then you jump. And if you're blocking a shot, you're going to jump probably your feet, your toes will finally leave the ground on their hit contact if you're blocking shots. Sometimes even after that. Sometimes you can wait and grab and throw it like a rebound. But uh, that all I have. This is the start, guys. I'm not coaching in person. Tomorrow is my last day coaching in person for classes and private lessons. So uh, I'm moving completely online to help you guys out. I hope you guys become members. If not, I hope you guys enjoy the videos and the content that we put out. Always, always, always let me know if you guys have questions, and I am absolutely happy to help. So thanks for joining me today. Uh, you can check out one of those $3 film sessions right now at that Calendly link that I just posted, calendly.com forward slash better at beach forward slash film session. If you want to start one of our courses, whether it was we talked about today, fix your arm swing in 21 days, ultimate defender and the blocking and peeling masterclass um, and the how to set in beach volleyball, uh, the 30 day blueprint. We have all of those within that membership and, uh, uh, and they're good in depth programs where you have to do drills, you have to film it, you have to post it so that we can actually coach you while you're at home and know you don't need a court. We structured everything to make sure that you don't need a court to be able to do it. It's an advantage but you can do everything from home so long as you got a phone or a camera. You don't even need a phone. All right. Good night, guys. Uh, appreciate your time. Hope you guys are all doing well. Happy Memorial Day, everybody, and uh, have a great week.